so I hate it. They don't hate the Indian state as much as the India's intelligence and its good people who preach but do nothing, only preach non-violence, peaceful recourse. What have we achieved? After 63 years, 47% of, of children in the age of 0 to 6 die of mal, I mean, suffer from malnutrition, malnourishment and stunted growth. 47% of the next generation. Is that criminal or not? Is that violence or not? Is that slow genocide or not? What are we saying about that violence? Doesn't bother us because we don't see it. It's a slow, gradual death. With a slay of hand, you change the calorie parameters. Lower it from 2,400 per person, you bring it down to 1,500. It means you are excluding hundreds of millions of people from Food Security Act through a simple slay of hand. Nutritional requirement. Our academics and scholars can debate endlessly. And they engaged in debate about whether nutritional intake should matter in determining Poverty, ah, they forget, they forget the basics, that in moving away, they also exclude hundreds of million from whatever little security that they can avail of through Food Security Act as and when it is passed, as and when it is passed. 100 families own 25% of India's national income. It doesn't bother us. That's okay. That's really okay. And rest of 80% survive on rupees 20. That's also okay because it's not us. It's not the people like us. How does it matter? We'll debate non-violence and violence. We will refuse to take a position. We'll condemn the Maoist right, left or center whether they deserve it or not. Most of the time, we are willing to even jump to conclusions. Condemn even without any proof. This is not to say that we should be silent where crimes are committed by them. No, that's not the point I'm making. I'm just saying that there is a natural tendency. If you honestly look inside and ask yourself, you will find in that honest moment of reflection that yes, what I'm saying is not an exaggeration there is an element of truth in it. At least grant that. But let me come back to the subject of war, because this is war we are confronted in. What does it mean? Chidambaram says that this is not a war. That the, the term war and enemy is not used by me, it's being used by, by, by the Maoist. Condemn them. Don't condemn me. I'm confused. I'm confused because what does it mean when 75 central paramilitary forces of CRPF, BSF, ITBP, Sima Suraksha Bal, and now there is discussion with the army through setting up of a new force along the lines of Rashtri Rifles, which was created for Jammu and Kashmir. A new force. I'm told that it would be called, I don't know whether this is true, which would be proficient in rural and jungle warfare is going to be set up. But 75 paramilitary forces, 75 battalions of paramilitary forces, roughly about 80,000 well-trained military. Now please understand one thing, paramilitary formations are organized along the lines of armies' infantry formations. Okay, This is the history, I mean, we must know. There is a big difference. Even if you call it police, it's actually not police. Police is the civil police. The armed police and the central paramilitary forces are trained in a different way. The mandate is very different. Now, they have been deployed along with an equal, if not more, battalions of armed police of the states in these various states. In Chhattisgarh, for instance, there are 26 battalions of central paramilitary forces, about 30,000 uh, uh, armed police are constabulary as the armed constabulary as they are called. Um, about 4,500 SPOs. So it's a huge force. And if you look at the districts where they have been deployed and where the, 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 the war is at its maximum, Dantewada, Bijapur, Narayanpur, 
It's not in all the seven districts of Jatisgarh uh, that the war is being conducted at the same intensity. No, it's not like that. And in fact, even there are of authorities who explain it. But if you take Dantewada and Bijapur, the combined population of Bijapur and Dantewada is 7.9 lakhs. 7.9 lakhs according to 2001 census. Now, if that is where the war is intense, and about 16 paramilitary formations are deployed there, that is including the state forces. It's a huge force. It's for 7.9 lakh people. These are armed. These are armed with very sophisticated weapons. Government of India and the media has this habit of crying that the Maoists are better armed than the security forces. It's an utter lie. You have to read the Ministry of Home Affairs' own records to know that they lie to the truth. And we all believe it because it's a god, no? Sarkar, Hukumat, from whom this information has come to us. Until they deny it, we'll believe that they must be speaking the truth. That's an utter lie. You have to carefully read the Ministry of Home Affairs reports and the press handouts. Go to the website now. Mercifully, in this age of electronic media and websites and all, there are a lot of information which can't be hidden. One way or another, you get hold of it. They are well armed. And whatever weapons Mao is possessed, 90% of them, if not more, comes from the state armories. So it's not as if the, arm, the, the Maoists have any different weapons than what the security forces possess. They got, in Nayaga, 1,200 weapons. 300 of them were AK-47s, the rest were uh, rifles. That is where they get their weapons from, no matter what the government of India says. And in fact, government of India is also this tendency of speaking lies in the public, but on the state, on the floor of the parliament, they have to be a little careful, because you never know, some maverick MP can raise a privilege issue that the minister has lied, so they have to be careful. So on the floor of the ark, look at what statements they make on the floor of the parliament and you get an idea about what they're saying. On the floor of the parliament, they declare Maoists have no foreign links. They declare the bulk of the weapons are from looting the armories or in the ambushes uh, when they collect the weapons. And it's only a small percentage of weapons or ammunitions that they purchase. How else will they get it in any case? They're not going to be supplied weapons by China or Pakistan, and even if they are willing to, they're not going to take it. Please understand the political, ideological grounding of the Maoists to understand this basic fact. Anyway, the point is, very simply, that they are well armed, they are well equipped, they have now going to be provided helicopters. I mean, the, the war is going to escalate. And now when we are talking of the army, it's going to go up another notch. Army is trained to cause maximum damage. Paramilitary forces are trained to attack and kill. There is a slight difference, but the police is not. The police is supposed to enforce the law and only use force as a matter of self-defense. There's a big difference between the three categories that I'm talking about. Now, with the deployment and the likely deployment of the army or the ex-servicemen who have been trained or who've retired, who will form part of like the Rashtri rifles that were set up in Jammu and Kashmir, we are in for an escalation in the war. In Dantewada, as I said, that there are very high deployment of security forces because Dantewada and Bijapur are two districts where the forces are being concentrated and most the, the, the war is being fought most, more intensively than other parts. These are also the areas where an embargo has been imposed. Now we all know that Bastar is malaria prone area. And now when the rainy season begins and especially by July, August when the food uh, stocks of the villages decline, then the propensity to, to fall victim to malaria or to other ailments increases by leaps and bounds. Now, since this area has been encircled, medicines are not permitted to enter. Okay? Food stocks, if villagers want food or rations, they have to travel to the security camps where the ration shops have been shifted. The bazaar, the huts, the weekly bazaars and huts now take place in these war zones 
inside the security camps where they have to register themselves. 